Hi, my name is Sean Olson. In this video I'm going to show you some of the grid and nudge tools included in Wallworm. So the first thing I'm going to introduce you to is to the nudge tools. If you go to Wallworm Extras and Nudge UI, you're going to get this floater that pops up. And this will give you all kinds of options here um, to do things. And one of the things here that you'll notice is there's these bunch of buttons here for X, Y, Z and super nudging. This allows you to just move things around. So I'm going to turn on snap to grid and make this object here. I'm just going to make a box. And now you'll notice that if I press these buttons, this object's going to just go along exactly along the current grid spacing. The current grid spacing is set to 16. So each time I press one of these buttons, it's going to move around that many units. I can also specify a certain specific spacing value, in which case it will use this value. So if I say 32, and now it will go 32, so it jumped 2. All of these buttons can be bound to keyboard shortcuts, which you can do under Customize, Customize User Interface. Go to the Keyboard tab and choose Wallworm.com from the list, and you'll find that there is a bunch of options that include nudge back, down, forward, left, and right. So in this case, you can see that I have some of these buttons bound. So actually, I can use my keyboard. So if I hit my keyboard, it will move around by those units. So again, these can be bound to keyboard shortcuts. These functions also work on sub-objects for editable poly and editable mesh. So if I right-click this object and convert it to an editable poly, and I want to move just this vertex, I can do that by pressing these buttons, and it will offset in the amount. And I can turn this back on the home grid, and the current grid spacing, and press these buttons, and they'll plop around at those dimensions, at those distances. It also works on sub ob every sub-object, most sub-objects at least. If I click on this whole polygon and hit Shift-D here, it's going to go exactly in that many units. Next I want to cover the snap settings. So if the snaps are on, if it has snap to world grid, then your snap, then your movements, the nudging, will snap whatever you're nudging to the world grid. And that's such that if I just move this slightly off the grid here, so you can see this face is um, at 79.096, and I nudge it in the X axis, you're now going to see that all of them are that this face is now aligned at 95.0. So it went to the nearest grid intersection for this. In fact, if I go to the each vertice, you're going to see that. If I turn that off and nudge and, and do a movement and nudge, that will not happen. So if you want them to stay snapped, keep this snap to world grid on. And you'll see that now they will snap all of the vertices of the current sub-object. Also, the object itself. So if I move this object off the grid and then move it with snap on, it will snap to the grid as long as this snap is on. And it will also limit itself to whatever axis you're using in this snapping method. You could designate a specific set of axes or use the axis constraints or if you want it to be all of them, choose X, Y, Z. So everything will always be exactly for X, Y, and Z on the grid. The next setting will control the interval at which the snapping happens. So if I have use spacing value, it will use this one. So the snapping that I'm doing now will always snap to the nearest one by one grid. If I change this to use the currently active spacing, it will use this currently active value down here which my home grid is set to 16. So at this point, if I nudge this in the Y, the value of Y is now going to be the nearest 16. So that was minus 32 there. Go again, minus 16. 
going up and down. And it's snapping to that grid. However, if I turn it to only snap on X and Z, Z and X, and I move it slightly off the grid on Y and move it on Y, Y will not snap, only the nearest X and Z. So that will help you uh, understand how that is working. Also, there is one other option here called Use Axis Constraints. And what that means is it will snap to whatever axes you have constrained to. So right now, it will, because I have the Y and the X selected, it will snap to X and Y. If I have just Z, it will snap to the nearest Z and not snap the Y and X. Okay, so now we're going to discuss this use snap verts on move function. I'm going to turn this back to use a spacing value of 1. And what this does when you turn it on, the currently selected editable poly will now enforce any movement of its subselections to stay on the grid. So when I move this, as soon as I let go, it snaps immediately to the nearest grid point. Again, using the snapping method here. So I'm snapping an X, Y, and Z. If I do that over here, move it, you can see the X is a decimal value, but as soon as I let go, it plops to the nearest, nearest vertex, or nearest grid position. This function works on any sub-object selection. So if I select a whole face and drag it up, all of the vertices will now snap as soon as I let go. Uh, if I go to edges, the vertices of that edge will snap as soon as I let go. So again, you can see if I select a vertice, its uh, positions are there. And I'm going to show you this. Uh, there's a, some display options here that will show you the positions of the vertices. So if I turn this on, every vertex in the object will display its position. So with this one on, every vertex shows. I'm going to turn that one off, and I'm going to only I'm going to show all verts off grid. When I turn that one on, it's showing all of these vertices that are off the grid. So these are ones that were moved earlier, not snapped. But as soon as I let go, they're now snapped to the grid. And any of the vertices that are on the grid, it's not going to show and highlight those. So you can uh, focus on those that you need to align to the grid. I'm turn that one on and do selected vertices off grid. So when this is on, it's only whatever the current sub-object selection. So these are being snapped to the grid automatically now. Um, so you're not going to see that. I'm turn that off, and I'm going to turn, and I'm going to move this whole object off the grid a little bit, and you'll see immediately that all of the vertices are now off the grid because I've moved this object away from the grid. I'm going to turn that off. There's also a couple other display functions here, dimensions. So this will highlight the current objects X, Y, and Z dimensions around the object. And there's also a bound. So this will show you the bounds and all the vertice points of the bounding box of that object. So these are some convenience functions to help you visualize what you're doing, especially if you need to stay on the grid. The next set of functions down here are grid functions. So I'm going to create a, a grid above the current selection. So when I click that, it creates a grid and activates it above at the very top of your current selection. It also aligns it to the world grid. So it's right at the top, but aligned to the world grid. If I select that object, the grid object. You're going to see that there's a bunch of extra options over here that are not normally part of a grid. Auto axis, auto freeze, keep on world grid, and a few other functions. This activate is on because as soon as I created this, this grid was active. If I deactivate it, it will go back to the home grid. If I reactivate it, it will go back to this grid. So some of these other functions here are auto axis. This function is only available in 3ds Max 2018 and up. It will not work and is grayed out in any other version of Max. When we turn this on, it means that this grid will rotate and change its display axis based off of the angle of view. 
and it will always rotate around its pivot. It's not actually moving, it's just its display axis is changing. And this is convenient uh, for some kinds of work. So I'm going to actually select uh, my box here and create a new box. So you'll notice that as I move around, that grid is also there. The grid is rotating. I'm going to move this box to the center of that grid. And you can see now I can actually work based off of my view, field of view. So let's assume that I need to decrease. I'm going to decrease the spacing on here and turn on snap the grid I'm gonna create another box here and you can see now I can create these boxes out here along here and rotate my axis over here and immediately create boxes over here as I need another convenience function is if I select the grid again and go to the modify tab I can easily just move it to another point so I'm going to click this pick point and choose that point. So now the grid is there and we'll rotate around that point instead. Go back here and create another box. You can see it's pretty handy for different kinds of workflows. And they're just convenient functions to help you get around and do things. Next, let's look at the auto freeze function. Select this grid. Turn on auto freeze. When I turn this on, the grid will become frozen the moment I deselect it. So now if I select another object, do need to move that. The grid is now frozen, and this helps you not accidentally select it when you have a, a dense scene or a dense grid. Because if you move out, you're going to see it's actually easier to pick the grid than anything else. So freezing it is good. However, there is one problem in that since it's frozen you can't reselect it in the viewport so there's this load helper button here if we click this it's going to show all the helpers in the scene it's a quick way to find just helpers like grids I can select it from here as soon as I select it because auto freeze is on it becomes unfrozen the moment I select it so this is convenient and if I deselect it again by selecting this box now it's frozen again reselect it it's back unfrozen next option we're going to show here is keep on world grid I'm going to turn snapping off and i'm going to move this grid off of the world grid so as soon as i moved it it doesn't always display in the viewport right away but as soon as i de select something else and come back to this grid you're going to see that it's positions are now exactly aligned to the world grid. So this makes it so you can't ac accidentally move your grid off the world grid. That means that everything on this grid will always stay aligned to the world grid no matter where you move this grid. I'm going to go back here and show you a couple of these other options. Even if I have keep world grid off and I move this object to some other point over here, I can click this button and it will move it to the world grid keep world grid on here and use this other option pick new pivot point and what this does is allow you to move it without deselecting I'm going to turn on snap to vertices I'm going to put it up to the top of this box and the reason why uh, this box actually the corner should have been on the grid but earlier I inadvertently moved it so I'm going to select that object turn on grid snapping and move it back to the grid. And this lets me do things on top of this object on the grid. So if I need to put another box up here and stay on the grid, well, there we go. We can just stay on the grid that way. If I need to move my grid back to another point, I can select it and hit pick new pivot. And turn on snap to vertices and put it back at this corner. Again, my name is Sean Olson. I hope this video has helped you in understanding some of the new tools that you have available to, in Wallworm to help you be more productive in 3ds Max. You can learn more about me at my website, seanolson.net, and you can always get the latest version of all the Wallworm tools at wallworm.com.
Thank you and have a good day.